So, you're still conscious after that last attack. Maybe I was wrong about you after all, Cecil. Maybe you are strong. Oh, so now you decide to talk. Ah, yes. Sorry about that. When I focus, I tend to stop talking. It's a bad habit that I wish to break one day. Did you miss my sexy voice or something? Well then, I'll try my best to talk as much as possible. Ah, ah, ah. On second thought, I would much rather you just stay quiet. Too late! Anyways, since we're having this little intermission between our fight, do you mind telling me what has been happening? Why are you acting so different than in the beginning of this fight? You seem... like a different person. Heh, <laughs> Ravafio asked the same thing. To keep it short and sweet, the Cecil you see before you is the original one. There are two separate personalities in this body, and I just managed to trick my other half into letting me out 100% by pretending that your power overwhelmed me. What?! And here I thought that once I took over, you would disappear. Sorry, Cecil, but I'm not sorry. This was my body first, so I deserve to have it back. And trust me when I say if I could explain things to you, I would. But these stupid mental chains, I can feel that they're still on me. I guess I don't have full control over my body after all. Dang it! You've got to be kidding me! Blomar? Was killed by a psychopath? That's it. Time for me to go all out. Huh. There doesn't seem to be a lot of moisture in the air. But I guess it'll be enough to give you a taste of the power I was holding back. Fishman Karate Black Belt Technique, Land Swimming. Okay then, Cecil. This shall be where this ends. <laughs> Boo. What? Yeah. Ends for you. And that was just payback for what you did to me earlier. Now comes the fun part. You're just as strong as I remember, James. And you're still just as weak. It's been years since you left the crew, and you've only become this strong. You could have gotten these results with me after only six more months of training. I'd rather stay weak than in a crew run by such cruel people. A weakling's mentality till the end, huh? You're just as big of a moron as your fishman friend. And tell me, James, why do you respect Hugo so much? Why do you think that you guys are in the right for this? Captain Hugo is my savior. He's a great man. All one has to do is stay on his good side, and he'll help them in any way possible. That's sugarcoating it to the max. Hugo's is only out for himself. He uses his money to reel people in, and then he forces them to never leave. Shut up. You can talk bad about me all you want, but never bring Captain Yugos into this. Now you've really done it, Leon. I'm killing you, here and now. Bring it. Huh? What was that? You shouldn't take your eyes off of me, Leon. Time to end this in a blink of an eye. Uh-oh. Whoa! That was a close one. Huh? I missed? You, you were actually able to see me while I was using my fastest attack? How? It was your signature attack. The attack that I could never compete with when we sparred. I knew that if I ever fought you again, I would need to know how it worked. How were you able to obtain such absurd speed? And then, I would need a way to stop it from hitting me. So I trained for hours on end during these five years of improving my observation hockey. I also realized how you do your ability. It, impossible. N no this can't be by putting just about every ounce of energy in your legs and then leaping forward at your opponent you go at a blazingly fast speed but the technique works like a glass cannon it's a technique that you can only use when you believe you can defeat your opponent with that one hit because right afterwards you're rendered useless now i'll go ahead and show you how it's really done leon you're making a big mistake remember the good times we shared I can make you so powerful. Bye, James. Checkmate. I feel so cold. Is that my blood? Yeah, it is. But you did well, old partner. Now it's time for you to take a nice long nap. I feel you, you ghosts. Whoops, didn't mean to send him that far. Oh well. Ah, you go, so you sleeping on the job? 
Stay away from me. What's the matter, you ghost? You given up? N never. I will never assist you in stopping that machine. What a shame. Guess this is it then. Say hi to Blomar for me. I'm sure the two of you can have a nice long chat about how you were both defeated by the great season. Die. Ugh. You still have some more tricks up your sleeves? That's actually kind of surprising. Why won't you die? Blomar, old friend, I'm so sorry. Save the crocodile tears for someone who cares. Now take this. Be overwhelmed by the darkness. Wh what is this? You're nothing but but a speck of d d dust compared to my p power. Now prepare to be absorbed. <laughs> You're so scared you can hardly form sentences anymore. Looks like it's the perfect time to use that technique. Unfortunately for you, Yugos, you picked a fight with the wrong person. I'm what people call a conqueror. C conqueror <laughs> Mr. Sizzle, you're back. Does that mean... I knocked out and then killed you, Gus. I... I can't believe it. You saved so many people's lives, Sizzle. Thank you so much for this. I I'm in your debt. Yeah, that's great. Mr. Sizzle? What's the matter? You're acting a little... strange, I guess. And what's up with those red eyes? Don't sweat it too much. It's just one of my abilities. Now then, we need to go find this machine and save Talon. About that, I can't really move very well right now. Hmm. Huh. This guy gave you a bit more trouble than you bargained for, then. Not really. I just got a little carried away and used up an unnecessary amount of energy on my last attack on him. That's fine. I'll carry you and we can head back to the Shadow Dimension. Shouldn't take too long to get there with my land swimming ability. Land swimming? Um... Do you mind just coming to get me when you finish finding the machine? I don't want to slow you down, plus I have one final thing to do here once my legs allow me to walk again. One final thing? It's a surprise. I'll show you later when we get back home. That's okay with me. I'll see you in a bit. Give me back control of my body! I can't believe I fell for your trick! Do you really think I would give this body back to you on purpose? Like I already told you, the mental chains are still there, so I don't have full control. The more I stay out, the stronger I can feel them pulling on me. You'll get control back soon. I'd probably even say that it'd be before Talon opens up that portal. Ugh! Our mind needs to hurry up and pull you back in! Hey, wait. What's that noise? It's really close. This way. Mahogany Man? Cecil? Oh, so you're still alive. Does that mean that you managed to beat the guy that you were fighting? Y yeah I'm sorry I didn't contact you on the table phone, but I just didn't have enough energy to keep those things going. It's fine. So, what's that thing in your hand? Oh, this? While being chased, I mean, while in my epic battle against the dastardly three-eyed Jack, I began to hear a strange sound and I began to go towards it. Eventually I stumbled upon this. I have reason to believe that it is the machine that Yugos implanted in Talon's Shadow Dimension that has been killing him. Ah, I see. And why haven't you destroyed it yet? Oh, well, I mean, I thought you should do the honors since you're his captain. It was supposed to be all deep and poetic. Cut all that sentimental crap, man. Talon is over here dying you're worried about metaphors. Not to mention, if I hadn't found you, the machine would have kept on going. Well, when you put it that way, I guess it does sound a little dumb on my part. Ugh, place it down. I'll destroy it. Yay, poetic justice! There. By the way, where is Leon? He asked me to go pick him up when I was done destroying the machine. I guess it's time to go back and get him. That way we can all go to the rendezvous point and wait for the portal to appear once again. Oh, Captain, my Captain, you're back! Yes, 
I have returned. Thanks to my participation in the cause, we were able to locate and destroy the machine that was plaguing Talon's body. That's our captain for you. Cecil. It's a really good thing that we were able to get that thing out of you, right? Yeah, but... Then that's all that matters, right Cecil? Right. Although, if you ever act that way towards me again, but without being under some kind of weird influence, you're gonna pay. Got that? Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I know. <laughs> Good. Well then, Cecil, now that our mission is complete, we'll be getting a move on. We have to go sign up for the fighting competition on Neist Plaza. Fighting competition? Neist Plaza? The reason that my crew and I came here was so we could participate in the Neist Beast Tournament. The winner of it gets handsome prizes and also is deemed a niece to beast, which is a very special title respected throughout the land. Whoa, sounds awesome! I bet there's gonna be tons of powerful people! What do you say, Talon? You wanna join? Cecil, Talon is not in any condition to participate in such a thing. Aww. Nah, it's alright, Leon. I can fight. This is probably the strongest I've been since Ram Hills. That's the spirit! All right, well, I guess we'll be seeing you there. The sign-ups end tomorrow, so you should probably hurry. Okay, sounds good. Okay, crew, let's head out. You don't know how much your actions mean to me, Sizzle. I, I can't believe you actually beat such a fearsome foe as you, Ghost. Yeah, I can't believe it either. Why do you look so sad? Oh, and I just noticed that your red eyes are gone. What kind of power was that anyways? Oh, um... Well... Red eyes? Forget about it. It's just a new technique I came up with. I call it... Spooky eyes. It helps me intimidate the bad guys. I don't need Talon thinking I'm lying again. I... see. Well, whatever works, works, I guess. So, Leon, what are your plans now? You're a free man. Those assassins probably aren't going to come after you anymore. Hmm, it's just so surreal. I suppose I'll just keep living out my dream. I'll travel around as a doctor helping anyone in need. Yeah, that's a great dream. And I know how you can accomplish it even more effectively. R really How so? How's about you join my crew? What? Yeah, come on, think about it. Talon and I are planning on going to so many new places. I'm sure we can assist you. What? Well, but... No. I... I can't. I'm not good as a pirate. I've told you, I've given up on the pirate life. But you still owe me for taking down Yugos. Come on, what do you say? I don't think it's a good idea. I consider you two to be friends of mine, but... I'd only slow you down. Come on, Talon. Talk some sense into Sizzle. What are you talking about, Leon? When you found out about what Yugos was doing to me, you switched right into action mode. You wouldn't slow us down at all. I think Cecil is right. Come on, Leon. Just remember the vow that you made. So now I live by my vow. If anyone ever needs a doctor, I will never turn them down. This crew needs a doctor. You're not going to turn us down, are you? I... I... Ugh. You got me there. <laughs> I guess I can give the power life one more try. Wait, does that mean... Deep down inside, I was secretly hoping you would ask me. Yes, Mr. Sizzle. I would love to join you in town on your journey to making you the next King of the Pirates. Awesome! This is the best! It's great to have you on board, Leon. Yay, 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 yay! We have a new crewmate! And as a new member of the... Wait... What's the crew's name? Good question. Uh, how's the Sea Venom Pirates? Works for me. Okay then, as a new member of the Sea Venom Pirates, I'd like to give you my ship. It probably pales in comparison to yours, but maybe something can be done with it. Oh, thank goodness. Our current ship is literally a raft with a sail on it. But it's the greatest raft with a sail to ever sail the seas! Oh, well, then that's great. I'm always happy to assist. We should celebrate. Let me get some drinks and food from the fridge. 
Oh, by the way, that Quincy guy left his crossbow behind. Oh crap. I'll go bring it to him really quick. Yo, Quincy! You forgot your crossbow at Leon's place! Huh? Oh, thanks, Cecil. He's not the only one who forgot something. I apologize, but before we left the apartment, I was meaning to let Talon know that I needed to talk to him in private once we get to Nice Plaza. Can you relay that message to him? Talk privately with Talon? Sure? Thank you very much. Alright, well, I'm off, guys. See you later! Hey, Talon, you feeling any better? Yeah, I'm more upset over how I was acting yesterday toward you all. Don't sweat it, man. It wasn't really you talking. Y yeah, I, I guess you're right. By the way, Talon, I've been meaning to talk to you about something I found while I was in your shadow dimension. What was it? I stumbled across a secret area or something. What? A, a secret area? Yeah, it was underground. It had a bunch of books and stuff in it. Uh, oh, that... That's where I would organize all of my attacks as the sneaky gun. You see, while most people think I was a cold-hearted assassin, I was really only after one thing, thwarting the plans of an evil man. Like I told you before, I know very well that you're a good person, Talon. I never had a doubt in my mind that that room is used for anything but a good reason. Ha, <laughs> thanks, Leon. Uh, yeah, but the real reason I brought it up was because I found a certain... notebook. Uh, notebook? Assuming you're the one who owned the notebook, you wrote about a man named Avion, and how you think that you don't deserve happiness. The entry was basically about how you have been seeing him, although the way you wrote about him made it seem as though he wasn't really there. Uh, Leon, I don't want to talk about this. Oh, I didn't mean to offend you or anything, I just wanted to make sure you're okay. That notebook and everything else in the area seemed pretty old, so... I'm guessing you got all of that settled out, right? Uh, yeah. You sure, buddy? I'm fine. L let's move on. Okay. It's just when Yugos' machine was messing with your mind and body, and you were hallucinating, were you seeing this Avion guy? Shut up, Leon. I told you I'm fine now. I, I don't want to talk about this. But I just want to help you. You wouldn't understand. Just... Just leave me alone. Now that now you put me in a bad mood. Oh, okay, okay. Sorry I asked. I saw my parents and little sister too. Wh what? You say I wouldn't understand, but trust me when I say I would and do understand. When my family died, I saw hallucinations of them all the time. Every day, they would remind me of how big of a failure I was. It was obviously not things that my real family would have ever said to me, but that didn't stop the feelings that I would get whenever they would appear. It got so bad that it almost drove me insane after a while. I... I didn't... I just want to let you know that I can relate. Obviously talking about this subject makes you uncomfortable, so I won't try to pry. But I just want you to know that I'm here for you, Talon. Over time, and with help, I was able to get over it, and I know you can too. <laughs> it, it, it hurts, right? Huh? See, seeing a person you love, someone that you only wish to do right by, insult you and, and ridicule you and mentally torture you, it, it, it hurts bad, right? Worse than a thousand knives to the back. H how? How did you make the pain go away? No matter what I do, he's, he's always there. Somewhere deep in the back of my mind, he's always there. Suppressing your feelings is not the way you should do it. As we clearly witnessed with what Yugos did to you, somehow, some way, this Avion guy will make it back to the surface if you don't squash him completely. How, though? Talk about him with me. What? Tell me something, Talon. Is this issue you're facing something you've shared with Sizzle? N no, I could never... Why not? Well, when I officially joined this crew, I told Cecil I wouldn't let my issues with Avion hold me back, and that I would entrust any problems I had onto him. If he knew how deep these issues truly lie, and how I haven't told him about them, it would crush him. So you have talked to Mr. Sizzle about Avion before then? I have, but... 
I lied. Lied? How so? It's something that I do whenever I'm asked about my backstory. I tell the story of how I was a boy with no parents who met a traveling magician named Avion. I was then unknowingly manipulated by him to kill the mayor of my town so that we could make a better place for the less fortunate, and that he then adopted me. Oh my. A year passed, and on my birthday, he revealed he was in fact a lunatic out to control the minds of people all over the world in order to create a perfect society with us to rule over. After seeing him for who he truly was, I refused his offer and ended up killing him. I then immediately sprang into action and began to destroy every mind control machine he spread around the globe. Wow, and all of that is a lie? Not all of it. In, in fact, almost everything is the truth. The one lie is what happened after I killed him. What actually happened then? My heart was broken. I, I loved Avion like he was my very own father. And to find out who he truly was, I, I, I was just a kid. When telling my backstory, I always try to paint myself to have been angry at Avion. I wasn't. I was just confused. Why would you do this is always the question that continuously repeated in my mind. I remember I could hardly breathe. The world became black and white. Everyone I thought was Avion's friend or ally ended up revealing that they hated him. That he would often talk about how I was all just part of his plan. And that I was did the world a favor by killing him. It was then that I realized that I was the only one who didn't know his true nature. And yet, I still cried every day and every night. He was the only person I wanted to impress. The only person I looked up to. He was my hero, and I thought I was his beloved son. I'm very sorry you had to go through that, Talon. But, if you don't mind me asking, when was the first time you saw a hallucination of Avion? M maybe about a few weeks after I killed him? I destroyed the original machine he showed me when he told me about his true plans, and then he appeared. And did he say anything to you? He asked me why I was ruining all of his life's work. I remember being terrified and falling on my knees out of the sheer shock of seeing him right in front of my very eyes. By that point, I had already slipped into a terrible place mentally, so those words only helped fuel that terrible state of mind I was in. I see. So the guilt of killing your father and destroying his dreams was what triggered these hallucinations. I... I guess, but... I doubt that that's the reason he stuck around with me for so long. I've long since made up my mind about destroying all of his plans and killing him. Killing him? You mean the hallucinations? No. You see, the day I killed him, he had given me my devil fruit as a birthday present. He then revealed to me that he had already eaten one of his own sometime while I was gone helping the poor and people in my town. I later found out that through this devil fruit, he was able to come back to life. Wait, what? So I plan to kill him as many times as it takes until he stays down for good. Hmm, Talon. I think I figured out why this man won't leave your mind. Why he's haunting you for so long. What? Why? You are living for this man. What? In the entry that you wrote in the notebook I found, you clearly mentioned how you don't feel like you deserve happiness. Why are you in this pirate crew with Sizzle, then? He clearly sees you as his closest friend. I mean, think about what he went through to make sure you stayed alive even after the terrible things you said and tried to do to him. Well, I... Are you in this crew for selfish gain? No, I would never. Exactly. I figured that would be impossible. The way you acted when I asked if you had shared your true struggles with Sizzle, you obviously care about him quite a bit. Being around him makes you happy, right? Well, yeah, I mean, it's fun being on this crew, and I kinda, sorta consider Cecil to be my closest friend. Good. I don't see where this is going, though. What does this have to do with Avion? 
What changed your mind? What made you believe you deserved happiness again? Uh, um, well, Cecil did. Go on? Between the time I set out on my journey to become the sneaky gun, and the day I met Cecil, I obviously made a few comrades and friends, but Cecil just had a different vibe to him altogether than anyone else I had ever met. Cecil reminded me of, well, myself. He was just like I was during the year I was happily living with Avion. I was so determined to make an impact on the world. I was so happy, just like he usually is. That's as simple as I can put it, but it's so much more complex than that. When I met Cecil, it was like I was meeting my true self for the first time in years. It was strange, but it was also such a breath of fresh air. I never wanted it to end. It's kind of crazy, but it even got to the point where I found myself attempting to sacrifice myself for Cecil. Huh. Although in the end, I was defeated and ended up needing Cecil to save me from getting my devil fruit stolen. Then at the end of all of that, I tried to explain to Cecil that it would be better if we split up, but he convinced me otherwise. So Mr. Sizzle is your anchor then? He's the reason you are the way you are now? Yeah, he is. If that's the case, then why haven't you opened up to him? Why are you still hiding these things from such a figure in your life? Why are you so scared? Well, I'm scared of Cecil. Being around Cecil is what scares me the most. You feel like he's going to leave you too, huh? What? 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 How did you... Well, yeah. That, and I fear what I'll end up turning him into. What do you mean? It's just... Everyone who's ever shown kindness to me, everyone I've ever cared about, they either change for the worse or leave me. I don't understand why. I have half a mind to believe that I'm the one who's responsible for all the chaos that happened to me. That I somehow did all of this to the people I love. That I caused them to change. Maybe there really is something wrong with me. At this point, I'm just afraid that it'll happen to Cecil too. Talon, don't speak that way. None of that was your fault. Now tell me, Talon, how many people are you referring to? It couldn't have just been Avion. My mom and dad, they were going through a horrible marriage because of me. They would constantly yell and scream at each other all day and night. The next thing I know, both died in an accident and left me. Many years passed before Avion came. But then everything got better, only for him to reveal his true motives. In my eyes, in those moments when he figured out the truth, everything became clear. Was he ever really there? Was he ever really the man I thought he was? No, no, he left me all alone. But it was much more than that. The man I thought he was was never there to begin with. Anyone else? Yeah. After Avion, I made a very close friend during my time as a full-fledged assassin. We worked together for a while, only for him to leave me all alone as well. By this point, I had already accepted that something like this would happen, but I can't say it didn't hurt. And that's why you can't let go. That's why you can't do what he wanted you to do, put all of your trust into him. You think it'll change by being around you and then leave you one way or another. Yeah. Now this brings me back to you living for Avion. The way you've painted it, Avion was the person who imprinted the blockage of trust that you now have. His influence on you warped your life for the worse. I'm guessing that it was only after your realization of who he truly was that you viewed your parents as people that left you alone. I'm also willing to bet that by the time you met the close friend after killing Avion, you had already put mental walls on yourself to not get too attached in case he also left you. And now you live a life where instead of stopping Avion to save the lives of others, you do it for the sake of revenge. To get back at him for what he did to you. And while you feel like this is what must be done, your fond memories of the good times you shared keeps the hallucinations of him around. Wait, what? What do you mean? 
The first hallucination happens and tells you that you are ruining his dreams. Why? Why would something your mind is conjuring up be telling you such a thing? I... You still cared about him. And how you were talking to him when we were torturing the assassin? You still care about him. He is both your enemy and your comfort zone. You're living both to kill him and to help him live on. By destroying him and everything he worked for, you're making it so only your fondest of memories of him can be the reality of his legacy. But... Where are you getting this from? I... Don't care about that man anymore. Not in a way that isn't hate. It was all in the very first thing you said to me when I told you about my experience with my family's hallucinations. Seeing a person you love, someone that you only wish to do right by, insult you, ridicule you, and mentally torture you? It hurts so bad. Right? Those were your words. I... Although you've suppressed them for so long, you still love Avion. You said it yourself, he was your hero. The man in your time of need who swooped by and carried you into a life of happiness. Your life ever since you met him, even after his death, has revolved around this man. You live for him, and that is why you carry this burden. It, it, it's true. I, I, I don't know what to do. Please help me. How do I get over this, Leon? It hurts so much. <laughs> Talon, we've established that Mr. Sizzle is your anchor. He's the reason you are who you are right now. You're going to need to trust him. I know, but it isn't easy. I'm here too now. I hope you can accept me as your anchor as well. Huh? Talon, Sizzle and I are your Nakama. Your comrades, your friends. I want to help you get over your problem. I want to be there for you as long as possible. Leon. And I promise I won't give up on you. I promise Sizzle and I won't leave you all alone. We literally traveled to another dimension to save you, dude. I... Listen, Talon. Now that we've gotten to the root of your problems, it doesn't mean your issue will resolve itself immediately. The fight with your inner demons won't end right away. Your life has been nothing less than tragic. You've been put through all of these situations, but you're much more than you think. And now, my friend, you are right where you belong. It'll be a work in progress, but that's exactly why I'm telling you all of this. I need you to know that we're there for you. Not only must you stop believing that you are the cause for all these horrible things that happened in your life, but Talon, you must stop living for Avion. You must come to terms that your quest must be for yourself. Live for you. It is completely fine if you feel like you need to reevaluate your reason for it. Are you doing it to save the lives of many from an evil man? Or to conceal the actions of said evil man in your eyes and turn him into the person you wish to view him as in your memories? Once that is answered, you must choose. Do you want to continue to build mental walls, or will you tear them down and accept Sizzle and I? These are things you must answer on your own. They will then determine whether or not you'll ever be rid of this. So Talon, I ask you, who are you and what do you plan to do, truly? I... I... want to stop Avion. I want... to be happy. I... I want to travel the world with this crew. You and Cecil? You two? I, I want... You two as my anchors. This crew. This crew I want as my anchor. Until the day I can stand on my own two feet. I want you two to help me get to where I want to go. For the sake of humanity, I cannot let Avion succeed. I understand, Leon. The mark Avion left on me, it's not something that I've ever just been able to ignore. I mean... I even kept the name Talon Slingor that Avion gave to me when my real name is Ezekiel. It's always been there. The fact that I am his son. But I'm more than that. I'm more than just Ezekiel Ken. More than just Talon Slingor. More than even the sneaky gun. I'm... Me. And I choose to be rid of this curse of mine. I want to be free. Excellent, Talon. That's exactly the response I wanted to hear from you. Now that the hard part is done, we get into the even harder part. Now just remember buddy, as cliche as it sounds, I promise life will get better. 
and Sizzle and I will be there every step of the way to make sure it does. You are planning on letting Sizzle in on this now, right? Of course. And, uh, thanks, Leon. I'm happy you decided to join us. I'm sorry for how I snapped on you earlier. Don't worry, Mr. Talon. I completely understand. I'm always happy to help. Man, I really wish there was some way I could repay you. Oh, wait, hang on a minute. I actually have this sword that I got a while back. Do you want to hang on to it? Oh, wow, Mr. Talon. I'd be honored to. It's a pretty cool sword. It went under some experimentation, and now it has some fire properties. Just try not to burn yourself, okay? This is really great. I think I'll name it... Catharsis. Catharsis? Yeah, Catharsis. Look it up. It's the perfect name for the sword considering the moment that we're in. If you say so. So what's taking Cecil so long anyways? Huh. No idea. Ooh, I can't wait to celebrate with Talon and Leah! Oh, what's going on? My head and my heart. I see now. I think I understand. What's going on? I thought it was strange that nothing changed since you let me out completely. But I guess it was just too early to assume that nothing happened. Uh, uh, um, just tell me what's happening to me! It seems as though, from now on, we'll be taking turns controlling this body. Huh? I can feel it. I'm taking control again, and now you're the one getting pulled in. My assumption is that I have a time limit on me. Once my time reaches its maximum, I'll get pulled back in again. This is excellent, though. If things stay like this, I'll no longer need your permission to take control. No! This can't be happening! Now then, like I told you before, I have a goal to accomplish, Cecil. And now it finally seems as though it's time to begin. What are you planning on doing? Well, first things first, Cecil. Your crew is a huge hindrance to me. With your dream and those two buffoons in the way, I'll never get things done. Wait. What are you implying? Either disband your crew and no one gets hurt, or I'll kill them both. Nice and slowly. I'll give you one week to decide. What?! 